Welcome back everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about how to implement uh, syntax highlighting into your programming language. So I know for a while we've kind of been dealing with just a blank uh, file where it didn't really have any colors or anything. So I'm going to show you guys today how to actually do that. Now I'm going to put timestamps in the description below. Currently what I'm going to do is I'm going to do first C Lion then notepad plus plus and then i'm going to do alternative ways of syntax highlighting now with c line i understand that c line is a you have to pay for it and it's not the cheapest thing i mean i usually do the yearly subscription uh which i believe now i've had c line for several years so now mine is like 60 dollars, and i've grandfathered in a pricing but i think it's like over 100 bucks for a year or something like that don't quote me on that, but I will put the link in the description below so you guys, if any of you are looking to download c -Line, you can do that. But I will just say that I've developed on several different platforms over the years. I've used Notepad++, which, I mean, just using Notepad alone is not really enough for C++ development as heavy as this. But I've done that. I've also used Visual Studios, and I've used other JetBrains products, but in my opinion, c -Line is the best one to do any C++ development. I also tried to write my language in Java as well originally, long, long time ago. So I say that to say that if it wasn't for c -Lion, honestly, my language would not be where it is today. The tools that it allows you to do, whether it be searching for things or renaming stuff, all just these little things that stack up make this the ideal IDE, in my opinion, to use. So with that out of the way, let's just kind of get into it to see how we do it. So when it comes to syntax highlighting, it's not too bad on c line side. Uh, basically what I do is, so there's a, where is it at? So there's a file. So whenever you have syntax highlighting, what you want to do is first, you know, write out your file, of course, in your language or whatever. You want to go to the file at the top. Now you can't really see it, but if you're using c line there's like file edit view navigate uh, so it's the one furthest to the left and then you select settings once you get into the settings then you're going to want to type I, i'm already here because i've already done the uh, editing but you want to search for file space types and you want to look for file types and that's going to be located under the editor and it's just going to be here so it's going to be file types under editor once you do the search in c line once you do that you're going to want to add this plus now i've already added my language so i don't have to do this but when you add the plus or when you hit the plus you're going to be asked for a name a description and then a couple of different things so let's actually click on my language to see what i have what you're going to want to do is first put the name of your file type that's going to be what's displayed here and then you can put a description it doesn't really matter you don't have to do that um, now there's going to be a couple different things that you want to do. So you want to, of course, say, all right, what is your syntax for starting a line? For a single line comment, for me, it's just two slashes, just like in every other language. For block comments, it's pretty standard in other languages as well. You also want to have your hex prefixes, if you have hexes in your language or not, doesn't matter. Uh, none of these fields are required, by the way. So if you don't have any, then you could just click OK, and it just goes away, and it's fine. It'll just implement whatever you put in there. I also have number post fixes, which uh, for my language, it's plus E. So like if you have a number of 100 uh, plus E10, then you're going to basically give the exponential or the scientific version of that actual number. Um, so I have that as a post fix. And let's see, so support paired braces. So I don't do any of that. I uh, support paired braces or paired parens, I mean. And I also support string escapes. Because of course, if you have like a slash new line or whatever, you want to differentiate that in the actual string. So, and then finally you have keywords. So it's at least with C line, the way that it works is now, if you're using an older version of C line, it may look different or it may look different if you're using a newer version of C line. So keep that in mind, but this entire process is exactly the same. I've used this process before several years ago and it's still the same thing. So hopefully this will still be valid, but you uh, want to have basically four tiers of various different Things. Now, in my opinion, and from what I've seen in how c -Lion does the actual tiers of each language or each word type, the first tier is going to be what I call your common words. So as you can see here, that's going to be like class, private, var, define, if, you know, return, 
all of your most common things and this is also going to change depending on your theme right so if I go out of here and I like try to change the appearance behavior and I try to change the theme of the actual IDE and make it from like dark to light or whatever this still stands whatever the most common word is will kind of all be in this one now the second one is mostly I use this for just true false and null this uh, I don't have a name for it but this one uh, pretty much anything after this is is free ball game but I'm just gonna share with you guys how I kind of lay mine out because the rest of these are just colors that are picked based on the type of theme that you have so for number two I use you know false null and true for three I use uncommon words uh, or words that you won't see that often so like int 16 and 32 uh, interface um, nil is very rare because you don't have to put nil if you don't return anything thread local volatile which is something for assembly statements in my language um, and then finally the fourth one I use even more uncommon words so things like extension uh, get init and you know I mean you can read the rest but that's kind of what I use for that and that's kind of how I do it and that's it and I click OK so once you're done with that then you want to now add what's called a registered pattern so you're gonna click this plus here and you're just gonna say everything dot and then whatever the extension of your you know languages so everything dot lang whatever the name or the extension of your language is going to be you click OK and that will be added here so that way whenever uh, you have you know or you click on any one of these files you can actually get the associated syntax with your actual language so and it just kind of picks that so you click apply and then click OK and you're all good to go and that's it that's pretty much how you implement syntax highlighting on the IDE of C Lion. now let's actually look to see how we implement this on notepad plus plus because I know that some of you guys may not want to actually use this you want to probably start with something a little bit more free then you can do this um, so if I go to notepad plus plus as you can see here I also have syntax highlighting for here as well um, this is actually located inside of my release folder so in fact if you download my programming language right now by going to where is it at uh, it is in the releases so if I go down here to releases um, so if I go here click this and you download the zip file I actually have um, if any of you guys are following my language a file that you can import if you do want to use the syntax highlighting I have for my language but let's go back to notepad so what you want to do is you want to first of course have your file that you want to click now one thing I will say is that notepad plus plus does not automatically apply the language mod to the actual file so every time when you open that file you're gonna have to go up here to language and click sharp to ensure that that's the language that you use now there is documentation for using the notepad plus plus system to implement syntax highlighting and I'm pretty sure there's more things to do with notepad plus plus I don't really use it that much so this is why I haven't gone that much in depth but I will provide links to that as well in the description below so you can check that out so now if we want to implement our actual language spec then we go up here and click language it's at the very top so if I go here click language if you want to go down to user defined language and then define your language and when you do that you're going to get this box once you get this box you want to um, create new so you want to create new you want to type in the name of whatever your language is click OK and then you're going to be brought here to this actual box now here I'm actually going to click sharp um, this is the one that I have and then from there you can actually once it's created you can do things like set the extension uh, you can import um, an actual thing so like for instance if I go to user defined language I can import an actual language file that I've exported so once you create your language what I would recommend uh, or your language spec I'd recommend you export that file into some location in your computer so that way if you ever I don't know upgrade notepad plus plus or whatever then you can always take that with you and you can just import that file it's just an XML file that gets generated so you can create your extension like I mentioned uh, you can also rename it if you want um, and then you can set your transparency there, there's tons of things you can do in here now for me I did not do any of this um, but I think the words kind of pretty much uh, explain what it does so you know you have your folding comment style so, so if you have various different comments then you can you know put the styles in there and if you click styler you can actually pick uh, quite a bit of stuff so you can pick what 
the font is actually going to be. You can pick the font size. You can pick whether it's bold, italic, or underlined. Uh, you can also pick the foreground and background color. I typically keep the background color white because if you do, then of course you'll have a black. Like if your background color does not match the background color of the actual file, then it's going to stand out. So just keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, so and there's other stuff in here as well. So for me, what I do is I have several different, again, tiers, four different tiers of words that it's the exact same way that I did on the C line side. So I have my most common words and I set those to this color. As you can see here, they're all the same color. And I set it to italicize and there's my font size. Um, 12 I think is pretty fine. If the user wants to increase it, of course, they can just hit the plus or the minus to increase the font themselves. Um, but I think 12 is pretty readable as it is. And so we have our second group, which is our most uncommon. Uh, then third, which is, you know, those values, and then fourth, which is these. So, and of course, I have different styles for each of my various different um, classes of words, I guess, in my actual language. So here are all the various different things that I've selected. Also, too, um, if you click a color, you don't have to just use these. What's really cool is you can pick any color in the color spectrum. So you can also save it as well. So you can add this to custom colors, and you can save it do that so it's pretty in-depth um, I really like it but let's actually move on to more stuff so next you have your the way you do your comments and numbers so you have more comment stuff so comment line style I just put this um, and then for number style I have prefix of 0x and you can also you know pick where you want your comments to be and there's some other stuff in here as well as you can see uh, you can also pick the decimal separator for your numbers and if we go here to operators and delimiters, these are going to be the operators and delimiters that you're going to experience in your language. And you can set the styles for those as well. They're just pretty standard. So the reason why these are split up is because each of these operators basically represents one single operator. And these represent complex operators. And it's just a matter of how Notepad++ handles styling those operators. So you'll see it when you actually do it. It's kind of hard to explain. But as you do it, you can kind of see what the difference is between the two. Um, and here's my style for that. I think I showed it already. Um, and then, of course, I have my other comments. So, like delimiters, you can have different delimiters. I have two different types of multi line comments this one and this one. I think one is more green than the other. So, then it's that color. This one is, yeah. So, this one's going to represent mostly for documentation comments. And this one's more for just general purpose comments for multi line. And then of course, I also have other delimiters with, um, here's my stuff for chars. And I put a little slash in there as well to escape that char. And that's what I have for this one. And finally, I have strings as well with an escape value of slash. And, you know, as you can see, I think these are the same color actually. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything for that. So that's how you implement syntax highlighting on Notepad++. Now, I know some of you guys may not want to uh, use Notepad++, and that's totally fine. So there are a number of alternative methods. One that I will recommend highly is Atom. Uh, Atom is a pretty good IDE. All of this is free as well, so Atom's free, and of course Notepad++ is free. So you can also use Atom. Now, I haven't implemented, or I don't know how to actually implement syntax highlighting on here, but I will say that if you're going to go with a free option, in my opinion, Atom is a better option than Notepad++ because Notepad++, while it is cool, Atom just has more features as a general purpose IDE. So, you know, if you're, for instance, sometimes on here when I'm programming on my Raspberry Pi, as I mentioned, I have a drone project that I'm currently working on. Um, I basically SSH into my Raspberry Pi and I can literally have PuTTY, you know, right here while I'm writing commands into the console to compile the code. And then I also set up a FTP server here where I can basically just access a specific folder in my Raspberry Pi over the network and I can do whatever I need to do. And it's just like accessing any file that was on my regular computer. So it's really nice. Um, I personally like this one. So I'm going to show you guys how to just select a grammar. So typically I go up to edit and then I go to select grammar. And for my language, uh, there's tons of options for other languages as well. And typically I just use whatever's here. Like I don't really go through the trouble of actually creating a language style. I just click C sharp and look at that. It completely blows up the language, which in my opinion looks a lot better than the way Notepad++ looks. And it's, it's really cool. So 
Um, I typically just use any of the provided grammars here, and I typically click on C Sharp because that's the one that looks the best. And yeah, so that's going to be everything for today. If you guys have any questions, always put them in the comment section below. And of course, if you guys would love to help support the channel, you can always head over to the GitHub repository at AndroidFCD slash Sharp. When you do, definitely watch Star and Fork this repository. That gives this language a lot more visibility and let other developers know this language exists. Also, if you guys are curious about what I do on a day-to-day, -day, you can head over to the remastered branch. And then there, I write some pretty decent commits, so you can kind of get a gist of what I've been up to without really having to look too much into the code. Now, I haven't really been committing too much lately. I've kind of put commits on pause because I am currently working on the Sharp Native Bridge, which is basically going to be just a giant dump of code where I can basically interface my language with C++. So it's going to be quite a while before you see another update from me from the language, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, also if you're curious about maybe some of the stuff that I've done in the past or stuff I'm looking to add in the future, you can head over to the docs folder. There's going to be two main files. It's going to be the changeless file, which is going to contain all the stuff that I've done in the past. And then the roadmap file contains all that information, but also stuff that I'm looking to add in the future. That's going to be it for today, guys. As usual, if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.